Hey bass players, today we are learning jingle bells. But first, I want to warm up with our D scale. Now, we're only going to use the first five notes. That's D, E, F sharp, G, and A. That's because those are the only notes we need to use for jingle bells. So let's review it really quick. We have our open D string. First position, first finger, E. Fourth finger, first position, F sharp. Open G. And then finally, A in the first position on the G string. So let's try that in order. We'll play D, E, F sharp, G, A, and back down. G, F sharp, E, D. Just like that. We also need to make sure that the spacing between our first and fourth finger is solid and consistent. So always remember our bass sign. We have a lot of space between the index and the middle finger. And then our third and fourth finger function as a unit. When we think of the hand in this way, we make sure we have enough space and a consistent distance between our first and fourth finger. That's going to keep that F sharp on the D string in tune. And we know that's a hard one. The other thing is to make sure you never let the pinky work alone. Always make sure you're holding down all four fingers if you're using the pinky. The first, second, and third finger will provide the support that the little guy needs. First, we'll do half notes at this tempo. That means we'll play like this. D, two, E, two, F sharp, two, G, two, A. Let's try that together. And one, two, three, four, D. piece jingle bells. Now whenever I get a new piece of music, I like to review the notes in my head before even picking up my instrument. So I'll look at the notes and if there's anything that is a surprise or that I'm not sure of, I'll go ahead and write the name of the note in with the pencil. Once I've identified all the notes, I'll go through and just practice the rhythm. I'll tap on my shoulder or on my leg the rhythm, counting to myself out loud the numbers of the beats like this. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In this piece, we have a leap from F sharp to A. Now we have to practice that because they're on two different strings. F sharp is on the D string and A is on the G string, like this. It's very important that when we move to the A, we don't lose track of where our F sharp is. In fact, after we play F sharp, we can use that pinky as an anchor and move just our first finger to the next string, just like that. So F sharp, keep anchored with the pinky, A. That will help us stay in tune. Once I feel comfortable with both the rhythm and the notes, then I'm ready to try it on my instrument. Let's give it a try. First, I want to try playing the piece at 85 beats per minute, and that's our quarter note. So that means we'll play it this slow. Just listen to the first four bars one time, and then you can join me. One, two, three, four. together. We'll play the whole piece now. One, two, three, four.
after you've tried it one time, check your progress. How well did you do? Did you make any mistakes? If so, was it just a few mistakes or a lot of mistakes? If you're feeling like you're making a lot of mistakes or you're not ready for the notes when you arrive at them, then it's good to slow down the tempo and play it at a much slower rate. So let's go ahead and slow down the tempo this time to about 60 beats per minute. That's gonna feel very, very slow, but it'll give us enough time to be ready for the notes when they arrive. Another tip, as soon as I start counting off, my hand should get ready to play. That means I won't have to make any last minute jumps on the downbeat. Here we go. And one, two, three, four. Nice job. If you're familiar with the piece Jingle Bells, you'll know that it's usually played pretty fast. So once you get comfortable with one of these slower tempos, just gently speed it up. If you can speed it up by small increments, then when you get to a very, very fast speed, it's going to feel effortless and fluid. For example, we just played at 60 BPM. So the next time you try it, you could try 65 BPM then 70 BPM, 75, 80, 85, and all the way up until you feel comfortable. Sometimes a teacher will ask you to play in what's called double time. That's when we feel the beat as a half note, meaning there'll be two beats per measure, meaning that everything is twice as fast. For example, the first four bars at 85 BPM will feel twice as fast than when we first played it. Let me play the first four bars for you, just listen, and then we'll try it together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Just like that. Are you ready for this challenge? If not, speed it up by increments until you are. For those of you who are ready, let's give it a shot. And one, a two, a one, two, three, four. So to review, we talked about using our bass sign to keep our hand posture correct. We talked about using the fourth finger on the F sharp as an anchor when we move to the A on the G string. We talked about using a metronome to practice and how to increase the speed at slow increments until you can do it at the teacher's tempo. And lastly, we talked about an order of operations to approach a new piece of music. First, identifying the notes. Secondly, tapping out the rhythms. And then third, putting it all together at a reasonable tempo. Keep these things in mind and you'll be a master of this piece and many others very soon. See you next time.